Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back to another episode of Super Gaming Minute, the channel dedicated to all things Nintendo and gaming. So Metroid Dread has been out for about a week now, and it's safe to say that people are enjoying this game. I've been playing it since its launch, and I'm having a great time with it. Now, I have been a Metroid fan since I accidentally stumbled upon the original title back on the NES at an uncle's house, and I've been in love with the series ever since. My favorite entries in the franchise have always been Super Metroid, as well as Metroid Fusion on the Game Boy Advance. That was, until now. Guys, there is a lot that I want to go over in this video, so I want to get right into it. But before we do that, don't forget to give this video a like. It helps get the video in the hands of other people who are interested in Metroid Dread. Also, comment on the video whether or not you think Metroid Dread should be crowned as the new king, or in Samus's case, queen, of the 2D Metroid franchise. And of course, the most important thing you guys can do to help the channel grow would be to subscribe to Super Gaming Minute if you like talking all things Nintendo and gaming. We release one to two new videos per week, and the only way to know when we release a new video would be to subscribe and to ring the notification bell. Thanks, you guys. Alright, so as mentioned, Metroid Dread has been out for about a week now, and I was lucky enough to snag a copy of the Special Edition, even though I wasn't actually able to pre-order it. And with the exception of a couple of days whilst visiting family, I've been playing it non-stop, and I'm absolutely loving my experience so far. And I'm not the only one, as reviews for this game are almost overwhelmingly positive, with the exception of a few people who are just wrong. I'm kidding. Everyone's allowed to have their own opinions. Even when wrong. Kidding again. Anyways. With how much hype that this game has generated Nintendo and long-term Metroid fans themselves, this game needed to succeed. It had a lot riding on it, a lot more than your average release and for a couple of reasons. The biggest being that this is a franchise mostly overlooked by Nintendo. Yes, this is one of Nintendo's oldest IPs, which doesn't sell particularly well with the majority of Metroid games selling under 2 million copies. As a matter of fact, the only Metroid games to break the 2 million mark would be the first Metroid on the NES with 2.7 million copies sold and Metroid Prime with 2.8 million copies sold. Which may sound like a lot, but if you take a look at other main IPs from Nintendo, these numbers are minuscule. I mean, as an example, the worst selling Super Mario game, the original Super Mario Bros. 2, sold 2.7 million copies and that was a Japanese exclusive. Also, just as a side note, I was going to use The Legend of Zelda in this comparison as well, but did you know that Minish Cap only sold 1.76 million copies? Because I sure didn't. That game was amazing. More people need to play it. Hey, you! You! Watching this video. Play Minish Cap. Thank you. Now back to the main point I was trying to make. The reason this game needs to succeed is simply because without fan support, Nintendo won't make the games. And honestly, why would they? Nintendo is a company. They go by sales figures. If an IP doesn't sell, they shelve it. Simple as that. It was a blessing to finally see Nintendo bring an end to the Metroid 2D saga with Metroid Dread, a game that was 19 years in the making. It's honestly a miracle that this game was even made. And you know what? The game seems to be a huge success. With the amount of hype the game got, on top of the game actually being one of the best Metroid experiences I have ever had, plus the fact that the Switch has a massive install base, this game should easily surpass 3 million copies sold. Which is awesome, because if any of you guys follow RGT85, he famously stated that Metroid Dread won't surpass 3 million copies sold. A dumb move if you ask me. Although to be fair, looking at the data, he should have been right, and he still could be, although I doubt it at this point. He may not have taken into consideration the huge install base of the Switch, and the fact that this is a means to an end of a franchise that spans 35 years, as well as the fact that with people chomping at the bit to hear anything about Metroid Prime 4, these people will want their Metroid fix, even if they don't particularly know too much about the Metroid 2D games. But honestly, the only reason I truly feel that Nintendo will sell upwards of 3 million copies of Metroid Dread is really just the fact that Nintendo's install base is so high with the Switch. Just take a look at the sales figures for Animal Crossing, another one of Nintendo's franchises that although normally sell pretty good, have never seen sales figures past 4.5 million on a home console that is. Although the same can't be said about Animal Crossing on their portable devices, which yes have reached almost 13 million copies sold on the Nintendo 3DS, which also had a really huge install base. Animal Crossing New Horizons on the Switch, on the other hand? Almost 34 million copies sold, almost three times the amount sold on the 3DS. People love their Nintendo Switch and are now starting to see just how good main Nintendo IPs are. 
Now honestly, Metroid Dread will most likely not see anything close to those numbers, but I do feel they will sell at least 4 to 5 million. Now I've spent roughly 10 hours exploring the deep and disturbing labyrinth that is Planet ZDR. My first impressions of the game were extremely positive. The silky smooth controls, the amazing sounds and cutscenes, plus the vibrant colors that seem to pop off the screen. My favorite detail in the game is when Samus finds the newest room where she can link up and talk with Adam. The room is pitch black, with only the green glow of Samus's suit lighting the way. It looks incredible. The huge amount of new and old enemies that make their way into the game, from minor characters to old favorites such as Kraid and Ridley, definitely make this a challenging endeavor for Samus. And I haven't even mentioned the newest threat standing between Samus and her goal, that being the Emmy, which is short for Extraplanetary Multiforum Mobile Identifier. These things give me chills, okay? Every time I enter one of the Emmy rooms, a sense of panic comes over me. I, I can't help it. I'm constantly pausing my game in order to look on my map, ensuring that they aren't following me and, uh, Spoiler alert, they are always following me. The fact of the matter is, you guys, I am really, really enjoying my time with Metroid Dread, and I recommend that everyone who has a Nintendo Switch, hell, I, I recommend buying a Switch just to play this game. It's, it's that good. Now, as mentioned, I've always been a fan of the Metroid franchise. Metroidvania games in general are one of my most favorite genre of video game, and this game has only amplified my love for a good Metroidvania. Now, previously, Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion have been two of my most beloved in the series. Although I'm sure some of you will agree with the latter, it holds a special place in my heart for many reasons. With Metroid Dread making its way into the homes and on the screens of Nintendo fans all over the world, could it possibly take the top spot a best in the franchise? For a lot of people, I would say yes, and I would definitely be adding Metroid Dread to the list of my top three titles, slightly beating out that of Metroid Fusion, and the good news? Most people would agree with me. One quick look at the scores of each Metroid game on Metacritic shows Metroid Dread on the very top of the 2D Metroid series, only beat out by Metroid Fusion and tied with Metroid Zero Mission. Now I made a video a while back right after Dread was announced asking if Metroid Dread is worth the $60 price tag. And although it's now safe to say yes, there are still people that I come across that are unsure if spending that kind of money on a 2D platforming game in 2021 is still worth the price. Not only that, I've also come across people that are saying that because its file size is only 4 gigabytes that it should definitely be less expensive of a game. To which I say, you're absolutely bonkers. Are you aware that Mario Odyssey is less than six gigabytes and you freaks aren't saying a damn thing about that? Give your head a shake. You're all worried about the price and are missing out on a AAA experience because of that. The game is worth it, pick it up. All right guys, that's gonna be it for me yelling and screaming to you about picking up a video game. Um, Pick the game up, give it a shot if you haven't already. We need this game to be a success in order for us to get another 2D Metroid game within our lifetime. And I think we all need that, especially after the success of Metroid Dread. Don't forget to like this video guys on your way out to get it into the hands of fans who might be on the fence about this game. Comment down below your favorite Metroid games and of course, subscribe to Super Gaming Minute if you like talking all things Nintendo and gaming. And with that said, thank you guys so much. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Keep on gaming.